So welcome to part one with Gordon Reid. We're going to be focusing on his backstory in this part. So g'day, Gordon. Firstly, uh, welcome. We're here at uh, Yamato Surf Club. Um, I hear this is something important to you and, and something in your past. So why, why are we here today? Yeah, well, look, thanks firstly for, for having me on today, Adam. This is, a, this is a great initiative and it's really good that we can get out there and talk about the issues that matter to us um, here locally on the Central Coast. Um, you're absolutely right. Uh, the Yamina Beach Surf Club is, has, a strong, uh, has a strong presence and a strong part of my history, uh, particularly with my family, with my father, who was a member um, of the Yamina Beach Surf Club. And um, this is my home. Yamina was where I was, where I was born, where I was raised. Uh, I still have family that live here on the peninsula. Um, I spoke very heavily about this area um, and this part, of the, this part of the world in my maiden speech to parliament. Um, in particular, the, the view that you see behind us right now with, with Lion Island. Um, this is one of the most beautiful places on earth uh, for people to live, people to work, for people to play, um, as, as you've rightly said. Um, and it's also a, a great place where, where community can gather and a great, it has that great sense of community and I'm really proud to associate myself with the peninsula and I'll always be a peninsula boy. So you've said you're born, born and bred here, so born in Gosford Hospital, I'm guessing? Yep, so I was born over in, uh, in Gosford, um, raised here in Yamina, started off at school just over there at Yamina Beach Public School. Um, my grandparents are still here on the central coast. Uh, my nan, Auntie Robin Reid, um, some of your viewers may know. I know that, that you oh, know yeah, Adam, know, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, a very famous uh, local uh, Aboriginal elder. Um, Auntie Robin's been on the, on the peninsula now for quite some time. Uh, my grandfather, Ronald Reid, who, who passed um, during the COVID pandemic, um, miss him every day, but also was local. And my, my mum's mum, uh, Elaine Rowan, uh, still lives on, on Ocean Beach Road. Uh, so my family's all still very local. Um, I then, um, we then moved over to the other side of the Central Coast and I attended Central Coast Grammar School um, and I live over towards the Terrigal side of the electorate now. Yep. Um, and then went on to do my, my tertiary studies at the University of Newcastle, um, completing my, my medical degree there. And I was fortunate enough um, and had the privilege to do my final medical school placements um, in Gosford and Wyong Hospital and then completed my internship residency and senior residency in those hospitals and it's this place the central coast um, no matter where I am in it it's always going to be home yeah I, I get that too yeah yeah it's definitely the place yeah. you always want to come back to absolutely when you cross the Hawkes River Bridge driving back from Canberra yeah, yeah. just this overwhelming this overwhelming sense of relief there's nothing yeah. quite like it yeah, yeah it's an amazing yeah. feeling I love it um, so you were talking about mum and dad yep so what did mum do um, so there's a, there's a bit in that. So uh, mum's been a, a small business owner uh, for quite some time. Um, and dad is also a small business owner now, but he's previously been uh, a paramedic uh, for the New South Wales Ambulance Service. And then prior to that was actually a nurse in the area of palliative care and aged care. Um, so we've always had that, uh, that link, um, that link to healthcare. Uh, my auntie's a nurse, um, Auntie Deb, she's been a nurse. She's now a practice nurse in a GP clinic. Um, it's always been something that's always been a big passion, a big part of my family's life, and it's part of the reason that I, I also entered the, the health workforce space um, and continue to work in that health workforce space as well. So brothers and sisters, have you got any brothers and sisters? I do. Uh, I have a young sister, Grace. Um, she's in her early 20s, uh, studying up at James Cook University in Cairns, uh, and she's a dental student. So she always wanted to enter the, the, health, the health space um, in some capacity, and. Um, dentistry and, and, and oral health was always of interest to her and, and she decided, decided to go down that path. Um, I love my sister to death, Grace. We, like every, like every pair of siblings, have our, um, have our differences in opinion, um, as I'm sure many of your viewers would, uh, would recognise. But, um, uh, you know, Grace, she's a strong, capable, you know, powerful Indigenous woman. She's capable of changing the world. I've said this multiple times and she'll go on to do, to do great things, not just in the the oral health and dentistry space, but in the health space and indigenous community more broadly, I'm sure yeah. of it. Okay. So you talked about going to school over in Yamina. So yes. what was it like going to school um, in Yamina? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think one of, the, one of the greatest things is the, 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 the primary school's proximity to the beach. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's, sound, there's sand in the, in the playground there. Um, you can see it on the, on the roadside when you're walking into the school. Um, it's, it's proximity to the beach and it's proximity to, to other, other parts of the peninsula was always great. We, we lived just around the corner 
uh, when I was going there initially. So um, that was always great. Um, and also, you know, the teachers there were, were fantastic. You know, I was uh, I started off in Kinder Pink uh, with Miss McKenna. <laughs> okay. Um, and you know, I'll never forget. I'll never forget my first day. Um, sometimes kids are sad. Sometimes kids are happy to be there. Um, I was obviously uh, I was a little bit sad to. Uh, you know, to, to go in through the gates, but uh, they made me feel welcome and they made me feel at home and um, they gave me a good foundation um, for not just, not just from an education standpoint, but from a community standpoint as well. I mean, the peninsula is a huge area, uh, you know, tens of thousands of people. Yamina Beach Public School is one of the biggest schools that we have here on the peninsula, if not the entire central coast. Um, and that community grounding that it gives you, um, it, it's really, it's really quite something. And I'm, I'll always be proud, always be proud to be a minor boy. So uh, I'm guessing you became a doctor. Was school easy for you? No, no, school wasn't always easy for me. Um, and I'll always, um, I'll always be thankful for my teachers for, you know, for helping me through school. Um, whether that's at Yamina Beach and, or over at Central Coast Grammar School, I had great support across multiple different subject disciplines, um, not just in the, the science and the typical health space subjects, but uh, you know, for example, uh, at Central Coast Grammar School, you know, across the areas of maths, science, uh, Indonesian, so foreign languages, uh, the social sciences, so economics and history. Um, I've always had great support and great role models in teaching. Um, uh, you know, they've, they've given me a great educational foundation and they've allowed me to, to really broaden my horizons in that aspect. So I'll always be grateful for the, the time and effort that they put in um, and also to my mum and dad, you know. Um, I think one of, the, one of the greatest things about schooling and education is it's a team effort. Um, and I was extremely fortunate um, to have my parents alongside me, uh, making sure that, you know, I was achieving my best and making sure that, um, you know, I realised my potential um, and I'll be forever grateful for them as well. Yeah. You, you did talk about grammar. Going from uh, Yamana uh, over to grammar would have been a big change, I'm going to guess, in demographics and whatnot. But how, how did you find the two schools? Well, I think, well, the, the biggest change was the, um, the drive. <laughs> so uh, grammar's about a 30-minute drive from here, whether you go via Empire Bay Drive or whether you go uh, the main round through Gosford. Um, and it's just a different environment. It's in a different part of the Central Coast. Um, there were people coming from all sorts of schools, uh, coming from all sorts of regions um, to, to Central Coast Grammar, and um, it was a bit of a melting pot in that regard of, of people. And... Um, you know, not that dissimilar to, to your minor beach public. It was a, the peninsula has always been a melting pot of people from other areas. Um, and I think too, it's, it's that central coast foundation that's the most important. It doesn't matter what school you go to, it doesn't matter where you are, you're still a coastie, you're still part of the central coast and you're still part of that central coast family, which I talk about a lot, um, whether it's in my publications or uh, whether it's in my speeches, it's all about being part of that central coast family. So wherever you are here, um, you know, it's 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 just what I've what I've believed in that regard. So, yeah. so uh, going through uh, your childhood down here and whatnot, while we're in an idyllic, uh, idyllic world, yeah. um, what was something which was a struggle for you and, and you had to overcome? Yeah. So I think um, one of the uh, I suppose we can we can go back to, to education as well. Um, I've I've always found it um, well. I, I did always find it a little bit difficult to. Um, uh, you know, with with the, uh, with, uh, uh, with reading and comprehension, and uh, making sure I was able to um, you know to comprehend what was on the page, and then um, and then turn that into an essay or something constructive, um, and also um, with numeracy and mathematics, um, I always found it a little bit difficult. But again, uh, with the help of good good teachers, um, both in the public and the independent sector, uh, with the help of my parents uh, and with the help of family members, I was able to overcome those hurdles. Um, you know, uh, which which led me to the to the career that I have today, um, not just in the parliament, but also as a as a medical doctor as well. Um, that's that's one of the big hurdles that, that I've had to overcome uh, that education challenge, um, and thus the importance of access to education, and thus the importance of access to good good quality teachers. Great teachers make the difference. They do, great teachers do make the difference because they're not they're not just teachers. They're not just teaching you about what's on the what's on the board. They're not just teaching you what's in the book. Um, they're teaching you how, what's on the board and what's in the book, how is that practically applied to life um, and how will you be able to use that in a discipline that you find interesting. Um, you know, I can, you use things, uh, you, you use history, you use economics, you use science, 
um, I use them every day in Parliament, um, and it's 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 only been beneficial for myself and our community. So you're right, good teachers make the difference. And and then being able to find that point to how to engage with you. Every every kid needs to engage differently with their teacher. They do. Um, you know, and finding that strong teacher and that influence. Yeah, can yeah. change everything. Exactly, and they're they're a mentor at that stage as well. I think. Um, and I, I'd actually like to thank a, a teacher who has recently come into my life, uh, Liesl Tesh, <laughs> um, <laughs> as we all know, the member for Gosford. Um, she mentored me um, and taught me everything that I need to know about being a local member, about engaging with my community. Um, she was a mentor through the election process and through the campaign, um, and she still continues to be um, a mentor through, you know, through my time now as the federal member for Robertson. And again, I'll be forever grateful for the help that she's provided me and continues to provide me uh, into the future. So um, usually we um, only really focus on the primary school and the secondary, but you've, got, you've gone so much further with your education to become the doctor. Um, so where did you go and do your degree? Yep, so um, I was fortunate enough to study medicine at the University of Newcastle. Um, so the way, that the, the way the program was broken up um, when I was doing it, it was a five-year degree. The first two years are more theoretical based, so you're in lecture halls, but one of the good, uh, one of the good aspects of Newcastle University is that you're doing practical, um, uh, you're doing, you're doing practical uh, assessments and you're doing um, those in-hospital pracs quite early on. Um, I remember being in a hospital in Newcastle, taking patient histories in my first term doing medicine. Um, so Newcastle's all about that practical experience. Uh, the third year is broken up um, and looks primarily at general practice. It looks about um, intersectional health, uh, so um, health uh, with those more marginalised parts of our community, um, and then uh, looking at health equity as a whole. Uh, and then in your fourth and fifth year, you move into the surgical specialties, the medical specialties, and then finally, and what was of interest to me, the critical care specialties, so looking at anaesthetics, intensive care and emergency. So. I did my first three years um, in Newcastle, and then I was fortunate, like I said earlier, um, to go back and do my fourth and fifth year um, in, uh, in Gosford and Wyong hospitals. Um, and then I, I put my hand up and said, I'd like to do my internship here and do my residency here. And I was, I was fortunate enough to be um, afforded that opportunity. Um, I did my, uh, my, first, uh, my first rotation as an intern was with the urology service. Um, at Gosford Hospital, um, Matt taught me some some skills that I'll I'll, um, I'll always use in my in my in my current medical practice, um, and then also in that in that first term, uh, sorry in that first year as an intern, I did a uh, an emergency department rotation at Wyong Hospital, um, and I still remember the the first patient that I saw, uh, and the doctor that I uh, presented the case to afterwards, and it was pretty much after that. Where I thought, well, I think this is this is what I like. This is this my is area. Me. This is where I need to be, um, and that's how it's always been. I, you know, I did I did my internship, my residency, my senior residency, and so on. And yeah. um, the the clinical teaching that you receive on the Central Coast is is second to none. You know, it's not just about going and doing professional development training in a lecture hall or a or a little classroom. You know, you that you get the specialists at the bedside teaching you clinical findings and how that relates to the theory and vice versa, yeah. um, which a lot of other hospitals don't, don't get. Um, so having that new facility there um, and linked with Newcastle University right next to Gosford Hospital just m must change that whole experience. You might, right there in the heart the whole way through your degree. Yeah, so when I, when I was there for fourth and fifth year, um, that, in, that big new building that you see was in the basement. <laughs> um, so it's always been a teaching hospital for, for Newcastle University and some of the other universities have teaching and practicals and placements there for the allied health disciplines and the like, but it's always been a teaching hospital for Newcastle University. Um, but that new, that new facility, you're right, is second to none. And um, I've, I've, had a, I've had a bit of a walk through with um, faculty members from Newcastle University and from the, from the health district. And, you know, it's fantastic. You know, there's the state of the art uh, anatomy labs and um, they've got simulation wards, which is excellent. They did have them in the basement um, of the hospital initially. Now they're in that, they're, they're spread out on a, on a floor of the building there and it's open to medical students and nursing students um, who can study and work collaboratively. It's, it's fantastic. Um, that, that teaching environment uh, and that clinical teaching environment is so important for when you go and see patients in real life. 
Um, it's very different from opening up a textbook and reading what a disease is and how to treat it as opposed to actually going it. to the bedside um, and doing that. So um, Newcastle University um, and the Health District have, have formed a fantastic partnership there that is only going to be beneficial, not just for the students, but for the community as a whole. Okay. We've spoken about uh, a low and having to overcome that. What was your highest high? What's the one thing you just, you remember from your childhood, you just think this was just amazing? Right. I've been fortunate to have had um, long loving relationships with my grandparents, um, both Elaine and Aunty Robin, um, and my, my grandfather, Ron. Um, I've got a great relationship with my, with my parents, my mum and my dad, and they've always been so supportive of me. My, my, my sister, as I've spoken about, we've always, we've always got on and, you know, um, as, as siblings do. And uh, my beautiful partner, Shaylee, um, meeting, meeting her, <laughs> I think uh, we, we met quite early on in the piece um, and we've been together for, for quite some time. Um, but, you know, getting to know her and um, building, a, building a relationship with such a loving and caring person um, in the area that she works in is, is fantastic. So I don't think there's any, there isn't any one particular moment that's a standout. It's been a continuum and a spectrum of, of things that, have, that I've been fortunate enough to be a part of. So, so is Shaylee from the coast as well? She is, she is. So uh, Shaylee uh, is a speech pathologist um, who works on the central coast. She's, she's originally from Tumby. Um, so the, the northern end, yeah, yeah. the southern northern end, I think. Um, uh, but yeah, she, um, we've been, yeah, like I said, we've been together for quite some time. And um, now in my new role, um, you know, speaking about the NDIS and disability access is, is something that we talk about frequently um, because she's very passionate. She, she, treats, she treats children and paediatric cases with, who have profound disability and who really need um, significant access and supports and services. Um, and she also does a lot of work with schools, um, screening children, um, seeing at what level they are and what supports and services they might require. So her, her impact in the community is, is far reaching and broad because it's not just health, it's education as well and the intersection of both um, and where disability links in there too. So uh, the work that she does, um, the work that she does for our, our Central Coast family uh, is, is unparalleled. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always nice when uh, your partner comes from the same area. You know, my wife's from the same area from the Central Coast as well. And yep, yep. And you, you all just understand how it all works yep. and how it feels. So Exactly, yeah, you get that, you know, not just from the healthcare side of things, but you're right. If you, you know, we're from the same area. We've grown up in the same area from when we were little. Uh, we've been to school in the same area. Uh, we were educated at the same university and, uh, and now we work in the same area. Um, you're right, you, you know how the place ticks, yeah, yeah. which is yeah. important. And you've always got something to talk about. You can talk about the old days, or do you remember when? Yep, and, and or where we're going, yeah. or where we're going. So, that, so that's the end of part one, really focusing on Gordon's backstory. And we'll be going to part two, which is looking at his entry into parliament and some of the work he's been working on.